All right. Awesome. So I, uh, we are so excited to welcome you here today to talk about Patcher uh, and learn all about how awesome this product is. And we are so excited to share it with you. So I'm Liz Gallo. I am the CEO of Ymaker. Uh, and Ymaker is a STEM and maker ed professional development company. Uh, Caitlin is here with me from Ymaker. And she is a technology education teacher, all around awesome STEM expert and leader. So we are ready to go. I want you to know that if you stay tuned till the end of this webinar, there's a prize. And who doesn't love a good prize, especially a prize from Patcher. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. We're all in the chat there to answer your questions, um, anything you need. We can talk about it. We can, any questions you have, literally any questions, comments, thoughts, we're here for you. Uh, and this is being recorded so that it will uh, be posted online later so that all educators from all over the world can see it and enjoy it and fall in love with Patcher just like Caitlin and I did. So, all right, we are off. So before we get started, we wanted to know a little bit about all of you and see who all of you are. Um, so Eric created a nice Zoom poll, three questions, and it should be popping up in a couple seconds. And we just wanted to find out who you might be, what your grade level that you teach, what do you teach, and what is your comfort level with circuit design? So that should be popping up on your screen if you could take a second to answer that. And Eric, since you created the poll, you're going to have to share back out with us and tell me what the results were. The results are in, I think. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. Uh, the results are in. Um, we're pretty evenly split. I didn't know it was going to be a result master. I apologize. I didn't uh, get a script. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we have, we're pretty, pretty evenly split. Uh, Pre-K to five six to eight and nine through 12. We have no higher education with us. Um, looks like everyone is STEAM or STEM uh, or technology related. Um, and um, we have uh, one person that it, uh, knows circuit design really well, a few that know it medium and, and a bunch that know it um, not so well. So um, perfect. kind of the perfect uh, time to learn. Yes, sounds like it's the perfect blend and Patcher is going to be able to help increase that comfort level with circuit design for sure. This will be the perfect product for our audience today. So great. Thank you for taking that poll. All right, awesome. so Patcher is teaching us about printed circuit boards and why is this important? Printed circuit boards are literally all around us. Look all around you right now. There is a printed circuit board and a lot of the stuff that's close by you. Everything from night lights to clocks to your phone to this nice selfie light that's lighting me up to this outlet in the table here. Every, there are so many things in this world that have circuit boards in them. Um, and are our students even aware of how that these things exist and that how these things are made? I'm not sure because I don't really think anyone's teaching about printed circuit boards to our students. So Patcher is the perfect uh, solution to help teach our kids about printed circuit boards and we're you know, supporting that and getting behind that because kids really need to learn how our technology works and that it's not just a black box and that they can create and design awesome technology too. So like Liz said, Patcher is your solution to be able to bring this to your students. Um, before uh, talking to Liz about this product, I knew nothing about Patcher. And I am happy to say that I started talking to the other teachers in my district about it, saying, hey, we should look into this. I love that there is um, a, a guided tutorial for your students to go through lessons. 
um, very interactive, and there's components that they can physically touch and actually solder and put their design together. So it is the perfect blend to help bring this to your students. So Patcher starts as a web-based learning and design platform. You hop onto the, the web platform and you design a printed circuit board. The web platform works on all devices uh, and has lessons built into it for kids to learn, kids and teachers really, to learn from. Uh, the Patcher team is eager to partner with teachers to develop and customize learning experiences for every teacher and for every student and for every classroom. Uh, they provide a ton of support to get you onboarded and ready to go. So once you've hopped onto the platform and you've designed your circuit and you're ready to go, the next thing that happens is that Patcher all of a sudden manufactures all of your printed circuit boards that your students designed. And then they send the circuit boards to you and to your students, the, one, the exact ones that they designed, uh, and students get to build their circuit boards. So they solder on the components, they make all the connections, and they have a functioning printed circuit board that they designed, got manufactured for them, and that they physically built. This product is perfect for technology classes, maker spaces, engineering classes, science classes, STEAM classes, computer science, uh, a really great learning opportunity for kids in middle school, high school, uh, and un universities too. So we would, oh, Caitlin. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. So before we jump into a little bit more of the meat of the product, I wanted to introduce the three people we, that have made Patcher possible. Um, we have Eric and David on the call with us. Matt is with us in spirit right now. Um, but I wanted to ask Eric first, 30 seconds, plus or minus, why are you so passionate about Patcher? Yeah, uh, thank you for having us here. Um, I mean, we're just so excited about Patcher um, coming out with this education tool because it really um, was built out of a desire um, to teach more people about electronics, but also based on our own experiences learning electronics. Um, Matt, David, and I are all self-taught electrical engineers and have gone through that process and uh, really understand the opportunity it has to, to showcase creativity and and learn something really new that's impactful to the world. So just super excited to be here and partner with um, with y'all to bring a, a te technical electronics to uh, students across the country. Awesome, thanks, Eric. David, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Why are you passionate about Patcher? Sure, so I'm David. I am passionate about Patcher because I think it, it allows students to access tooling and uh, manufacturing that otherwise they, they wouldn't have access to. I've worked in STEM for about 10 years. I was a technical editor at Make Magazine. And one of the toughest challenges we had at the magazine and also that I've observed in STEM education is simply accessibility to advanced technologies. And that's what we're trying to solve at Patcher. We're trying to say that anyone who has access to a web browser and has a mailing address can design printed circuit boards. It doesn't need to be something that only electrical engineers can do. Uh, so I'm really passionate about uh, enabling that and, and working on a tool that, that makes that a reality. I think you, I completely agree with you. If I ever wanted to bring printed circuit boards to my students in my classroom, I wouldn't even know where to get started, honestly. Before Patcher, I didn't even know where to get started. I kind of probably touched on it, talked to them about it, but David brings up a great point. This brings accessibility to your students and makes it easy for educators to bring this to their students. So Patcher is the easiest way to learn electronics design. And I like that term that Eric used. He said technical electronics. And that, to me, that's a really cool word. I've never heard that before, I like that. Um, but Patcher really helps teachers and students successfully do printed circuit board design. Uh, as a technology education teacher, I taught kids how to use Arduino and breadboards. And 
there was always a disconnect between what was actually happening and what they were creating. And I love how Patcher really builds in the capacity for students to design it, get it built, and then physically build it. There's a lot of uh, like mind, muscle, memories that are happening there that will help our kids really solidify that printed circuit boards are everywhere and I can build one. And that confidence and that empowerment that we're giving our students is really how we build generations of STEM kids and solve all of our technology problems, all the problems of the world in the future with some great STEM-minded graduates. So with Patcher, you pick a lesson plan to learn on their website and they have a bunch of great lesson plans that are fun, that teach basics of circuitry, uh, basics of circuit boarding, uh, and kids go through the lessons and, and learn a lot of information in there. Then students design, like I've said, the circuit board, where they want the wires to go, the routing, where LEDs are going to go, switches, and other electronic components. It gets manufactured for the student, so it's printed, and all the components are put together. And then students, it gets mailed to students, gets mailed to your school, gets mailed to your students, and then students physically solder uh, those components onto the printed circuit board. And then the last part is celebrate where kids get to show off, wow, I created this, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, principal, I created this circuit board from scratch, and now it's here. Uh, and it is really an empowering experience for kids. And I think you bring up a great point. It's empowering for the teachers as well. Um, <clears throat> it makes it easy so anyone can literally build a circuit. Like Liz said, it guides you through how a circuit is made. I love that there's tons of uh, visuals alongside of text in the lesson plans on, on any web or any device that you can access this. Um, I accessed it on my iPad, on my PC um, while we were preparing this webinar. So it was easy for me to get onto the platform on either device. Um, and it's not too much, you know, some, platforms, it's too much, you log in and it's too much text, it's overwhelming. Petra is not that way. Um, it truly, anyone can build a circuit. Um, we know that electronics is very difficult, but with Patcher, facilitating circuit design is gonna be easy for you as a teacher with your students. Um, you don't need to be an engineer to design a circuit with Patcher. Um, you just need to be a facilitator. And most educators are comfortable in that realm. So we want to continue you in that path and just give you the tools that you need to be able to bring circuit design to your students. So Patcher is easily deployable in any classroom environment. You have the support of the Patcher team to make sure that it goes smoothly for you and for your students. Uh, working with Printed circuit boards helps develop fine motor skills and practices hands-eye coordination, which sounds like something preschoolers need to learn, but actually our middle schoolers and our high schoolers are still developing those skills. And this really helps build that experience. Uh, Patcher is cool and unique from other types of circuit boarding and other types of electronics because it appeals to both the technical and the artistic student. So kids who really like the technicalities of putting circuits together and making them function and kids who are artistic and like to design. Uh, Caitlin told a great story about how her daughter said to her, mommy, why don't you put those two LED lights for the eyes so you can make a beautiful face? And that was her artistic spirit expression coming out. And Caitlin was like, oh yeah, I never thought about that. I was just you know, doing the technical drawings. Uh, and I love, I love that little story. Um, it has a practical application. Like I said, circuit boards are everywhere. Uh, we need to be teaching our kids that this exists and that they can create it. After kids build a patcher project, there are so many opportunities to expand that project. So it's not just a one and done. There's 3D printing add-ons. There's you know design challenge add-ons that you can do with your students now that they have a functioning circuit board. Uh, it's completely personalized. Like when we talk about personalized learning, this is it. 
we talk about giving kids choice and voice with their work, and this is what gives them that. Um, there are multiple chances through the program to master learning objectives, master all of those things that we want kids to learn. Uh, in the platform, there are roadblocks so that we're ensuring students are engaged and are understanding the content. So that kid that just clicks through, I'm done, <laughs> that can't happen <laughs> because there are roadblocks that are built in that forces them to slow down, read the information, make sure they got it right. Uh, and the best part about Patcher is that it saves you time and money. Uh, they take care of all of the manufacturing and all the components and all of the learning that's happening when we're talking about circuit boards. And a little bonus tip about Patcher, it can easily be used in person and virtually. Uh, so I love that little bonus tip. Especially with the unpredictability of this coming school year. I know a lot of schools are already back in session or they're just, you know, getting started. Um, I go back to school. Tomorrow is my first staff day and then students are back in the building next week, Tuesday. Um, and I know it's just a week by week, day by day. So it's great that this product can be used no matter what your school year looks like this coming school year. Um, and Liz touched on this, creativity over technicality. Um, and I am a very technical learner. Um, I, I love looking at an exploded diagram, putting something together, following the directions, uh, looking at the bill of materials. I am a very technical oriented person. Whereas my daughter, like Liz said, is a very creative person. Um, and when she came and looked over my shoulder when I was planning this, she is, she, she's like, ooh, mom, what do you, what is that? It's colorful, it's engaging. So both the creative person, uh, my daughter and myself, the very technical person were engaged on that learning platform when I was experiencing it, um, when I was checking it out. And Liz did say, you know, you can't click, 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 click. I can verify that. I tried um, to click, click, click and see if I could just get through. And even with the technical basis of, you know, the various college degrees that I have, I still had to go back and look at it and read and actually make sure I understood what they were asking before I moved through. Um, so I love that this platform gives you the opportunity to appeal to all different types of learners. Um, you can pull it up on your screen uh, as a teacher, as a facilitator, go through it with them. If you have a group that really you need to just take a back seat and go slow with them one step at a time, um, get everyone on the same page, or if you have a high functioning group that needs to go through at their own pace, this platform will work in either model um, and will appeal to both the creative and the technical student. Um, and we want to make more of the world of connecting things, make building, bridging those connections between what they're seeing. You know, I have a iPhone next to me and I also have my dog's beeper when she's barking in the backyard. They both have circuit boards right there, but how is that actually made? What does that actually look like? And bridging those connections. Um, and that's our job as educators to try to build as many connections for them as we possibly can before we send them off in the real world. So I'm going to dive into uh, a little demo of what lesson one looks like. I'm just checking in. Can you still see my screen okay? Wonderful. Um, and I made it through lesson one. So I only have lesson one on my profile right now. Um, if you had different lessons for your students, they would be right next to each other. And don't forget about the chat. If you have questions as we're going through before I jump into the platform, please go ahead and jump into the chat, ask some questions. Um, but I'm going to launch this Hello World. And I absolutely love the first time that I saw it. Um, I absolutely love the design of the outline, the outline shape of the circuit board. Um, it's something unique. I haven't seen it before. And I've seen a lot of different products. Um, and I love the that the student can design where these different components go. That's the creativity piece. Um, 
and Liz already mentioned this story. I wanted to place the LEDs exactly where the diagram was because I'm a very technical person. I just wanted to work and function. Whereas my daughter wanted to move these LED lights and make it the eyes of this, I think she called it an octo, octo squad. She was naming it, giving it its own name. Um, she's 10, by the way, uh, going into fifth grade. So she was highly interested in this product when I was giving her a little overview. So below the first image, it just gives you a little overview of what the lesson is going to look like throughout the lessons. There are these awesome call outs that explain different terminologies, um, different, uh, and there is also a glossary of terms. So educator, if you wanted to pull that and have that as a resource for you for the glossary of terms, even if you need to just be one step ahead of your students, if you're learning alongside with them, you have that as a resource as well. Um, you also can click and learn more if you wanted to dive in, say a kid was really asking about it, or you wanted to direct instruction about printed circuit boards and pull that up on your screen, you can do that. Um, so I love that throughout the learning platform, it has those little call outs. Um, learning electronics is a process. Yes, for the teacher and the students. Um, and definitely Patcher does that process with the students easily. So I'm going to jump in. So the first screen, notice how the layout, like I said, it's not too overwhelming. It's nice. It's fun looking. Um, we have our tools. We have, obviously, this is the build screen or the editor. And then over on the left, this is where the instruction is, where the direct instruction is happening. So it starts off with the bill of materials and it gives you a real picture of what the components actually look like when they are mailed to them, uh, to your students. It gives a little overview of a lesson. There's those call outs again. If I clicked on that, it would bring me to another screen that talks about push button switch. Um, and if I move down, you can scroll over and also see the symbol. Um, and if I was on a bigger monitor, all that would show a little bit nicer. Like on my iPad, it looks a little bit different than it does on my PC screen, but it does give you that slider so you can move over. And notice how right now there's not too much on, slide, on this bill of material page. There's not too much information. Maybe this is, you know, the first 15 minutes of a lesson that you needed to go over with the students. And maybe this is a piece that you go over with them. Or like I said, if you wanted to just let them go in on their own, you could do that and just walk around and facilitate and answer any questions that they might have. So next, the printed circuit board. What is a PCB? It answers that question. It gives you that glossary of terms that I was talking about. And if you click down, it would bring you to that glossary of terms. How does the circuit board work? And I love this. This happens throughout as well, the little call outs. Hey, good job. You're staying on track. Here's the next step. Awesome. I love that it gives the technical diagram as well. It's not all fun and pictures. This is really what uh, you know a basic circuit design looks like, what engineers actually see and use. And it is not, Liz and I were talking about this yesterday, last night, when we were planning this. We said, we love the language that they choose to use. It is not dumbed down for them. It is still technical. It is using technical words, technical skills that they need to know and understand. Um, but they do it in a way, way that's easy for kids and educators to understand, which I absolutely love. It goes over polarity, LEDs, talking about the positive and negative side. And again, it's still not too much text, brings you to the next step. Awesome, let's try the next step. Component placement. Now we can actually literally drag and drop onto our printed circuit board. So I can drag and drop, drag and drop, Oh, I don't like where that one is. I can move it around. I can also rotate. So there's a rotate. 
anything that you hover over, it does a call out. So it tells you what the different tools are, which I like. If I wanted to undo that move, it, you can step back a step. Um, battery, and I'm gonna place it off the circuit board on purpose because we know some of our students are gonna click, click, click and just drag and drop quickly. I wanna show you what the platform does when you place it in a location that's not going to physically work. I'm gonna drop in some LEDs. Welcome to the layout step. Here's your editor, add your components. It's component rotation. Like I said, if you wanted to rotate your components, you could. It also even gives you a little video that shows you how to do it as well. <clears throat> Stuff like this is why we think this would be both easy for kids to use virtually and in the classroom in person. You can use it in a wide, wide variety of different ways on how you want to instruct your kids. Um, verify your layout. Once you have all the components placed, it's time to add our electro electrical connections between the various components. But when I click next, notice how it says down at the bottom of the screen. Can you see that call out okay, Liz? Okay, looks like there are still two issues to resolve, but it, it tells you. There's been other platforms that I've used that just says error, and then I'm like, where's the error? But it literally shows me, it circles it, and it says pad is out of bounds. It shows me exactly what component is out of bounds. So I'm gonna move it. I wanna move these LEDs a little bit more. Okay. Now I say next, awesome. All of that is actually able to be placed where it is. The next step would be actually adding your routing. And then the last screen is finishing up. This would be lesson one for your students. But I wanted to just give you a little taste of what it looks like. Um, again, I know we're on the sales team here, but I love it. Like, I love how easy it was. It was very easy for me to pick up and understand. Um, and I, I think it would be great for a wide variety of learners. So give me a second to hop back over. I think you just made a really important point. So it is accessible to many, many different types of learners, right? Those glossaries are really helpful for English language learners, students with learning disabilities, students who need that extra reinforcement. Uh, we can add a screen reader to it to, for kids who struggle with reading text on the screen. We can put a screen reader on so it'll read aloud to them uh, and really logical and organized and thoughtful instructions that a lot of our kids need. Uh, so I love, I love that for kind of a universal design approach to learning. All right, so electronics are hard. When I taught other electronics platforms, there was literally wires coming out of my ears because <laughs> I was so overwhelmed by the, the wires, the this, the that, the this, the who stuck the breadboard, who peeled the sticking off the back of the breadboard and stuck it to the, the closet. And now there's a breadboard permanently on our closet. That might've happened. Um, and uh, what I love about this patcher is that they make it easy. They literally make it easy. So as a teacher, you discover the lessons. You pick a lesson from our outline library and you invite the students and they get right into that platform that Caitlin showed you. Then uh, they learn. They spend their time reading and understanding all those terms and creating their circuit board. Then it goes off to manufacture. So you tell Patcher, I'm done. Uh, my students are done and they batch send all of the students' designs to a place that manufactures them. Uh, and that place happens to be in China. <laughs> and the students then, and it gets manufactured and made and created for you and then gets sent back to you in the mail quickly, quick turnaround time. And students get to build and assemble their projects uh, using an assembly guide that comes with it. And that assembly guide is unique for each student. So Tom asked what happens when the PCB components show up in my classroom. 
So each kid will get a, a baggie of their PC, PCB board, their LED lights, their switch for their resistor for this product, for this, this lesson that they did. Um, and it comes with this assembly guide. And students then have to assemble the components into their circuit board exactly how they planned it and then go to solder. So it does require soldering, but that's a good skill to teach our kids. There's lots that they can learn from it. And I don't know if you've ever been in a classroom with middle schoolers who are soldering, they love it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's like their favorite thing to do. Can I solder, Ms. Gallo, can I solder? Ms. Gallo, can I solder? Ms. Gallo, can I... no, we're not soldering, we're doing other things. But can I solder? I need to solder it. <laughs> they love it. So, uh, and they're good at it. They can get good at it. And there's lots of opportunity for them to practice. So it, Patrick just doesn't send one kid, each kid one set of materials, it sends them three. So kids have three opportunities to make a mistake and redo it. Uh, and that's also part of the engineering design process, right? We don't get it right the first time, totally okay. Let's do it again. So it really, there's really tons of opportunities for kids to be successful, um, to make sure they master it and to have practice while they're doing it. If you were to try to do this on your own, this four-step process, it would be at least, at least 11 steps and cost way more than $1,000 for you to do with your students. So what you'd have to do and Caitlin and I and all of our technical expertise have no idea how to even go about doing this, but you would have to design a circuit on a circuit board yourself as the teacher. Um, pain point, like I have no idea. I have no idea how to design a circuit, no idea. Um, then you'd have to write the lesson plan. So, okay, I can write lesson plans. I'm a teacher, I know how to do that. Uh, then I have to figure out how to get my students to design this. So I have to find a design software, I either have to design it myself or have students design it, which is crazy. Um, Cause now I gotta teach them this platform and I don't really know how to use it. They don't really know how to use it. It's not a platform for education, right? We're already lost. Um, then students will design their, their PCB when we finally get around to uh, getting them into the design software and understanding how to use it. Then someone's gonna check each student's circuit. You know what'll make you go cross-eyed faster than checking 400 kids PCB circuit boards? <laughs> like you, there's no way that you have the capacity to sit there and be meticulous and make sure that no routing lines are crossed and that no LEDs are falling off the side of the board. That's a lot for you to do. Um, then you have to order the PCB boards. Sounds simple, but where do you order printed circuit boards from? I have no idea. As a teacher, I have no, they didn't teach me that in teaching school. I have no idea where to order printed circuit boards from. Um, find the components, where am I getting these LEDs from? Where am I getting switched from? Is it the right size? Am I ordering enough? Is this even gonna work? Is it the right uh, leg leads coming out of it? Um, and then, students can assemble their circuit board, but with no instructions. So they have to remember in their, you know, infinite memories that those, those kids have, the, what their circuit was supposed to look like in order to build their, assemble their circuit. So- And Liz, yeah. how many different purchase orders as a teacher would you have to do without Patcher? I mean, imagine begging the purchase order department, I need this purchase order to go to China. And you, right and you now in Mandarin. <laughs> right. Mandarin. And the turnover time. Think about the turnover time yeah. as well. No, impossible. So Patcher makes it super easy with their four-step process. Everything, all that hard work is done for you. You are a facilitator of learning, a facilitator of making this real for kids, a facilitator of getting kids great experiences and having tons of success with Patcher and with printed circuit board design without stressing you out. It's literally you sign up and we're there and we're doing it. So I love, I love that. So to circle back one more time, Patcher wants to empower you. They don't want you to just say, hey, this is the product that I want. And then you're, you just sign in. They want to meet with you 
Eric wants to talk to you and see what your learning objectives are in your classroom. He wants to do an entire onboarding process with you to empower you and your stu students to make sure you both feel comfortable through this entire process. There is not tons of vendors out there that will do that. And that's another reason why I love Patcher, because if I was going to work with them and bring them into my classroom, by the end of my first conversation with Eric, I would feel more confident already bringing this to my students. Um, so they want to form a partnership with you. They don't want you to just buy their product. They want to meet with you, find out your learning objectives, find out what your goals are. Um, and if another thing that Eric and David mentioned when we talked to them, Liz, was when throughout the onboarding process, if a, a classroom is already experiencing circuit design, there are ways that they can customize the learning experience for the students so that you're not just reteaching the same thing that you're already doing, um, which is awesome. <laughs> if they truly feel like this is important to bring to your students, uh, and that is why they are in it. They are in this to bring this learning to your students, not to just make money. They truly want to make sure that you are feeling empowered, that you feel comfortable with the learning that you are bringing to your students, and the students are successful throughout this learning process. So there was a couple different things happening in the chat. Anything that I needed to go back? Squid. The squid is the patcher mascot. Love it. Oh, and they can customize shapes to be whatever you want. Oh, Ooh. we talked about this, Eric, right? Yes, so yes. They can customize shapes so it could be your school mascot, right? Yeah, so uh, the shape and the silk screen and everything can be fully customized, uh, including the lessons. Um, we built our own content management system um, that makes it easy for teachers to hop in, design whatever lesson they want, um, upload whatever shape, anything is completely open. Um, and we're here to help and, and partner with you to do that. Yeah, awesome. Like, you could even, like, I, I, in my mind instantly went to, we'll have kids, make a bunch of circuits and then like resell them as like a school fundraiser uh if that's possible but i also love jason's idea of combining an ocean technology squid printed circuit board and a bioluminescent lesson plan jason that is my one awesome <laughs> i love that idea i love it yeah no hmm no right so you should, yep. Nice. Um, I, go ahead, Eric. I was going to answer the question in the chat. Um, you know, mm -hmm. this is something that uh, we want to work with everyone on the right price for their schools, but um, really starting price per student is uh, $20. Um, and then uh, we have a little bit of leeway there as well. So um, we want to make that a conversation. The, the $70 you see on the website is directed towards kind of after school activities for parents that want their students to learn and other things because you're buying it for school in bulk, um, we, we offer discounts. Awesome, thank you, Eric. Right, that's the whole we wanna work with you thing and right. make sure that it works for you and make sure that it gets in the hands of as many kids as possible. Right, and when we were planning this webinar, just talking to the Patcher team, very down to earth, very easy to conversate with. Um, uh, it was easy to connect with them talk about what type of learning is happening in my classroom versus, you know, from the engineering standpoint and things that they've experienced, how we could build those connections easily. Um, so just that's another added bonus. You know, the Patrick team is awesome. <laughs> so right. Liz, yep, go ahead. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming this evening and learning all about Patcher. Um, thank you to the Patcher team for having us. We'd love for you to fill out this survey because when you fill out the survey, you get your special prize, which is access to the first lesson that Caitlin showed you. So um, make sure you take, uh, you take a QR code scan of that QR code that's on the screen, or we're gonna drop the link to the survey in the chat because if you're on your phone, 
you can't scan a QR code. So we're gonna be universally designed for everyone and give everyone an option to take the survey. Um, it's a quick, easy survey and you will get access to the first lesson, which is so exciting. So you can really dive in there, read all the content, say, oh yeah, I can understand how this will work in my classroom. Uh, and then get in touch with the team and start with your students as soon as you can. Yes, thank you. Tom, I'm gonna answer your question. So I asked we, um, his question, I'm gonna go back up. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about teaching versus, versus facilitating? So I was thinking about, you know, the I teach five different sections of uh, technology in the middle school. I'm thinking about a couple of my groups. I could probably just let them log into lesson one and send them on their way. And they're gonna be good. I'm gonna walk around and just answer questions. Whereas there's a couple groups they have, um, just, just they need a little bit more guidance. Um, and depending on the makeup of the students that you have and their past experiences um, with printed circuit boards, I was just thinking that you could use lesson one and facilitate the learning as it's happening. So pulling up the first screen, reading the first paragraph with the students, um, looking at the glossary of terms together, actually using lesson one to facilitate the learning. That's what I was talking about. Um, and depending on your students and your own comfort level, um, like my own comfort level, I would go through lesson one a couple times before I even get the students on it. So I felt comfortable about it. Um, and like I said before, after looking at lesson one, I feel comfortable bringing this to students next week. Um, so definitely it could be used in a number of different ways. Having them sign on and send them on their way or pulling it up on your display board in the front of the classroom and kind of facilitate the learning as they go. Another question, is there a lesson where students design a plug-in power supply for breadboards, like the breadboard companion? Eric, do you have an answer to that question from Daniel? Um, there's not currently a lesson right now. Um, that's something we are working on, uh, but we do offer uh, as a part of kits for schools, if that's something you're looking for, um, we uh, supply that for you. Um, actually, one of our educators are is here with us today and we sent him um, a bunch of kits with uh, proto boards and uh, plug-in power supplies for um, coin cell batteries and stuff. So um, that is definitely on the radar though for uh, on the design side. Yeah, and that talks to, I can take my printed circuit board and expand it from just what I did, that one-time thing to a bigger project. Uh, that's pretty cool. Ah, teaching how to solder. One of my favorite things to do. Um, so teaching, there's lots of great tutorials online to teach how to solder to kids. The most important thing to remind kids is that solder is hot. The soldering iron is hot. When you melt solder, it's hot. Keep your hands away from the hot solder. And another little teacher tip, if you keep an aloe plant in your classroom, it oftentimes alleviates the multiple trips to the nurse because I touched the solder, it was hot. And I tell them it's like a sunburn. <laughs> and we just put a little aloe on it and no one else in the building knows that another kid burned themselves on the solder. <laughs> um, and the first time that I taught soldering in middle school, um, I didn't have much experience myself soldering. Um, so Tom, this kind of speaks to your question. Um, I was able to kind of do some practice. It's not, it's not too difficult. Um, I, I really think, oh, an owl. Ah, <laughs> that's funny. If you're looking in the chat, uh, Jason just said, I thought you had an owl, not an Ooh. aloe plant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, an aloe plant. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I same as Caitlin. When I first taught kids how to solder, I learned like a week before. Um, mm -hmm. Really didn't do any soldering prior to that. Uh, I had a great lesson where kids would make solder people with just a piece of copper wire and solder together, uh, just to practice. And then they loved it. They like did so much more than just a 
solder person and that really helped them build their skills. Can one teacher lead a learn to solder lesson with 20 or 25 students? That seems a little scary. Yes. So I wouldn't recommend having 20 uh, soldering. But maybe you have to, oh, yeah. Liz, you broke up for a second. Sorry. No, uh, it's okay. I wouldn't recommend having 20 soldering irons in the classroom and every kid is soldering at the same time. Mm -hmm. I would have five. So, and keep them all in one place. Uh, so those five kids are soldering and the rest of the class is doing something else. Uh, because then you can just monitor what's happening at that solder station. And, you know, you're not trying to watch 25 kids solder at the same time. Uh, that's how it worked in my classroom and it was successful. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. I've taught it in stations, um, teaching them or demonstrating the lesson. Um, I either pre-recorded myself so that everyone had an up close demo of me soldering, and then I shared it on whatever learning management platform you have, or just uh, you know having a camera like a document camera and streaming it up to the projection board. That's whatever cool. method you need to do to be able to teach them, but I didn't have twenty five kids you know, circle around me because that they're not going to see it's up close. It's small. It's technical. They need to be able to see what you're doing. So if you don't have a document camera, then just pre-record and then you can show them the video. Um, but there's many different ways that you can do it. And if you don't feel comfortable, there's also YouTube videos of awesome people doing it already. And one Go thing ahead, to note, too is we uh, recognize that to be a need, especially for teachers that are trying to deploy this uh, for the first time without prior electronics experience. Um, and we will be uh, pushing out some tutorials and some gu some guidance on that as well, um, as well as um, we're planning on testing out um, cheap soldering irons for classrooms and trying to find the best ones for y'all as well, because um, that is uh, definitely um, a skill to learn. But once you learn it, it's like riding a bike. Perfect. Awesome. And again, Liz mentioned this each, right, Eric, they get three per student. So if they, if they the get student five per student with two, uh, two components per, uh, per kit. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, you have two tries on five PCBs. Um, wow. That's a lot. Yep. That's, That's awesome. great. And if they get it right, they can have multiples. Exactly. Well, too. Awesome. Awesome. All right. How Any other happening? questions that are coming up in the chat? If you haven't completed the survey, again, please do. We thank you so much for your time joining us tonight, wherever you might be. Um, those of you who are educators jumping back into the classroom for the school year, we wish you luck and support throughout this year um definitely check out patcher and the other um you know sit down and, and meet with with eric and his team to really dive in how patcher is going to be successful in your classroom thank you thank you thanks a lot yeah thank y'all